All right, welcome back. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now we move on to Off the Press and see what uh, the headlines and uh, dailies are this uh, morning. We'll begin with the Daily Independent with the banner headline there. Fresh crisis in APC as Lawan Buni Bika over 2023 presidency. Uh, there is a high that the S Oil and Gas announced CEO uh, Board of Appointment. Then gunmen abduct Abia Varsity student Q10 in Niger and uh, in um, Ondo State. Above the masthead, 27 state, 121 local government areas at risk of severe flooding. Uh, agency once uh, CBN extends Naira for dollar incentive for diaspora remittances. Uh, just below uh, the page there, Boko Haram attacks uh, scare heightens uh, security tension at National Assembly. Embrace a name to guarantee peace security, Buhari tells uh, Nigerians. Uh, then again, in security, Senate Grill Service Chiefs, IGP, DGs, DSS, and NIA, or the rider, a service chiefs uh, are doing their best uh, with what is available, Lawan is saying. Nigeria operating military government in a democracy that uh, attributed to Bode Judge. Buhari Jonathan Songolu Kalu commiserate with Adeboye over son's death. Uh, those are on the front page of the Daily Independent. All right, let's now go to the Punch newspaper. The headline reads, Boko Haram invasion plot. Anxiety in FCT, heavy security at NNPC, army barracks, others. FG increases security presence in Abuja, intensifies stop and search. And guards brigade here is saying who are not aware of security threats in nation's capital. Above the headlines on the Punch newspaper, $1.5 billion put Hackett refinery repairs begin. Projects gets 44-month deadline. Reps summon NNPC, CBN, FIRS, EFCC, probe illicit financial flows. Cash crunch. States bleeding in bad situations, says Umahi. Arufa here says, we were ready to lose students in planned bandits' bombardments. Wow. Wow, that's just shocking. Below the headline on the Punch newspaper, we see a picture of people jubilating, dancing. And uh, the caption reads, freed Kaduna students' excited parents storm school, victims in hospital. Talks ongoing for release of Greenfield versus students, and that's according to Sheikh Gumi. Adeyeye, narrow-minded, trying to relaunch himself, and that's according to Fire Me's aid. Buhari, National Assembly, governors condole with Adeboye over son's death. One dead, vehicles destroyed as hoodlums clash in Lagos. Probe begins Monday as FG suspends MPA Managing Director Bala Usman. And lastly, here on the Punch newspaper, gunmen kill policemen, abduct another couple, other in Ogun State. Well, those were screaming um, headlines. Away from the, uh, the punch, we'll move on next to The Guardian. The banner headline this morning uh, is uh, rumors of bandits attacks uh, in settle Abuja uh, with several uh, riders there. Uh, then again, uh, cautious optimism as contractor takes over Port Harcourt refinery for $1.5 billion uh, rehabilitation. All right, uh, those are the stories on the more on the Guardian. Expect greater floods uh, this year, federal government tells uh, Nigerians, as housing ministry plans port for sale of houses, uh, Lagos uh, begins distribution of ICT devices to students. Catholic Church charges Mbaka followers to atone desecration. All right, uh, those are the stories on the Guardian. Uh, finally, Buhari uh, governors uh, uh, PFN Mon Adeboyo's son, uh, Dari. On the Nigerian Tribune, reps probe 43 billion naira safe school initiative. Buhari suspends NPA MD Hadiza Bala Usman. No training of 3,000 Fulani men in Undo Army barracks, and that's according to Akere Dolu. Oyo sets to give final judgment on boundary disputes in 23 local government areas. 28 states at risk of severe flooding, that's according to the federal government. Insecurity, defense budget not adequate, and that's according to the Senate president. 
Buhari Governor's Office mourn as Adeboye loses 42-year-old son. Reps probe reports on $348 billion illicit financial flow and loss of public funds. All right, those are the stories uh, on the, you know, the dailies this morning. Let's get back to our analyst, uh, G.D. Johnson. Uh, uh, precisely, uh, the caption on the Nigerian Tribune just hit me. Uh, Reps probe a 43 billion Naira Safe School initiative. Uh, do you really think it is apt right now, uh, knowing that uh, the insurgents, bandits, uh, you know, have taken over schools and soft targets uh, recently in the country? First, um, we express our condolences to um, the pastor of Redeem, General Vasya of Redeem Christian Church of God over the loss of his first son and his third child. It's very unfortunate. God grant them fortitude to bear the loss at this critical point in time. Amen. Um, and also to all other Nigerians, either through one way or the other, that have lost their loved ones through. This banditry, some were released, some were killed in the course, particularly in Katna, because of them being kidnapped for going to school, which takes us to the first story which you asked me to comment about. That is, every one of us that have children in school now uh, are scared. I'm, not, I'm sure we are sleeping with our one eyes open, uh, with our heart beating at the faster, at the first story. You no, know, the, the, the sighting of schools, schools, whether universities, um, secondary schools are usually cited far away from the from the community, particularly boarding schools and universities that are hostile. And what we are seeing now is giving everyone a cause for concern. I'm not sure if people are not going to adopt homeschooling for their children because the schools are, are not safe. With respect to the rep probing, I do, I've never seen the result of any probing by the House of Rep. I've never seen any prosecution. I've never seen anybody being held accountable. As far as I'm concerned, it's just pure grandstanding. Grandstanding on their on, on, on their behalf, trying to show to Nigerian that they are doing something, where in any case, um, they're not doing anything. And with the security situation in the country, the National Assembly should be killing the president, not even the service chief. The service chief alone, they should be holding him accountable. There's no resolution. There's no process that have been put in place to ask questions with respect to how we are going to make our children safe. They've not even invited the Minister of Education for them to see how they're going to make our schools to, to be safe. I remember in the in the seventies when we were still young, where soldiers were posted, I could recall soldiers were posted to 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 all to all schools, secondary schools in Lagos then to provide security and across Nigeria to provide security um, and maintain discipline in some of this, in, in, in secondary school across across the nation then. So this particular issue is a, is a cause for concern. Even though my son goes to school in Lagos, but where is in Lagos, is far from the cosmopolitan area of Lagos. I still have my heart palpitates. I, every time, let me just put it across, every time, a parent receives a call from the son or the daughter that are in schools now. The first thing, what's happening? The first thing, your first reaction is what is you are already agitated and pepped up concerning concerning that. And so let through let rep continue to prove, but they need to do what they are supposed um, to do. Which takes me to the second story, which I want to talk about with the Senate grilling service chief. We have it in the punch newspaper. And in the Tribune newspaper, the, the, the service, the angle that the Tribune newspaper reported that same story is that defense budget inadequate, Lawan. We saw that the Senate was grilling the service chief, the body that was meant to hold the executive accountable and the head of that body at the same time, even before the end of the meeting, even before we are privy to what happened in the meeting, made a defense for the service chiefs. One, saying that the defense budget is inadequate. That's the angle that the Tribune newspaper report, reported it. Um, and the point newspaper said he, the Senate president was also saying that they were doing their best, their best with what is available. Jesus is Lord. Mm. Mm. That they are doing their best with what is available. 
If their best is not good enough, then they should call it quit. If this Senate president is making excuses for this service chief, if the body that has control over the post is saying that the funds that they have made available for security issues are not enough, and yet they have money to make provisions for the renovation of the National Assembly, and that they didn't appropriate money for security, it calls false to question. If, if, the Senate president of, if the Senate president or the majority leader of the United States Senate or the British um, House of Lord uh, has said it, he will be forced to resign because people are not hold accountable to the words they speak. That's, mm. That such excuse and such reckless statement that that, that shows deletion of duty, that shows lack of respect for democratic tenants and the Nigerian citizens who are stakeholders in the Nigerian project. You think that if Nigeria is a company and our board of directors are making such statements, we will not, will not have sacked them. They will have, the, 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 the shareholders during annual AGM will have removed, will have removed, will have removed them. But since they know that since they know that they perpetuate poverty, and when elections come, they give handouts, and they give handouts to the people, and they make the process very difficult for people to participate in the process, they know they will always be in power. All you right. should expect that for someone that has been in government since 1999. So, and that's why some of us have argued that there is a need for a time limit. He has been in government since 1999, 1999 to date. So it does, it's far away from reality. I'm not even sure that he has gone to UB. Um, in the last two months. I'm not even sure that he has spent, since 1999, he has spent two straight months in UB. Mr. To know Gina what is Johnson. going to be the security situation in, Mr. in Gina 1999. Johnson. Which takes me to another story concerning the Senate president, which is the story between him and the, and, and, and the governor of the state, and the Kyadika chairman of APC. The Kyadika chairman of APC, Kono, the governor of the state, that they are picking over 20 ever 2023 um, is the Senate president. You want to assume um, larger than life role concerning that. But my warning to APC is that they should be careful. APC, if they are not careful, might not have candidates in 2023 elections. Because if they continue with this, their unconstitutional arrangement with having a caretaker committee, having a caretaker committee chairman to run their party, which is contrary to the constitution of the party, which is contrary to the constitution of Nigeria, they are opening themselves to litigation. It is beyond even Bunu and, 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 um, and, and Lawana. It is the general overview of the democratic experience. They are opening themselves up to litigation. And APC, out of their own sheer uh, lack of respect for democratic principle, I don't want to use the word, the word, does not sound very, very, but it's it's English word. That's there's there's no basis for it. Quote unquote, out of their own sheer stupidity, they lost Zamfara State, which they won. They lost Bayesa State. They didn't provide candidates in in River State. In some other states, they lost the election. They won the election Mr. on the election. Mr. Johnson. Mr. But they Johnson. lost the election because they didn't. Mr. Gina Johnson, kindly hold on. Kindly hold on. Um, we'll talk more about you know these issues, but focusing on what we're seeing on the newspapers this morning, really. There's this story here um, about the girls who were kidnapped from the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Afaka Kaduna State. We'll be speaking about this, you know, in detail with Sheikh Gumi, you know, Kaduna State Security Commissioner and others. But there's a statement here um, um, attributed to El Rufai. He made this on Thursday saying that the Kaduna State government was ready, this is on the Punch newspaper, that we were ready to lose students in the planned bandits bombardment. So that this situation is a war and that the plan was to go in there, bombard the terrorist hideout. He knew that, that some students would die, but that that would be seen as collateral damage since it was a war, and they will rescue the remaining students who survived. I don't know what your thoughts are on this statement, because he eventually said that the terrorists changed their location, and that's why that bombardment did not hold. So, meaning that if that held, well, some, uh, the students might not have been up to 27. What is the value of a Nigerian life? Remember the story of 12 Thai, Thai kids that were locked up inside a cave in 2018. 
I want the recreation of that story. They were locked up inside the key. Twelve boys locked up inside the key for more than for more than for close to a month. You know how they were rescued? It became a national international story. The boys were rescued. If they were Nigerians, they would die there, Jesus' name. Inshallah. They will, yeah. They will just die there. Nobody cares. What is the value of an average Nigerian? In January, December, January last, December or January, December last year or January this year, towards the tail end of the year and this year, Americans came to Bornu State to rescue their citizens that were kidnapped as hostage. You know the distance between United States of America and Nigeria. What the, see such statement, it tells you the value they have if his, his own son or his own daughter that are kidnapped, would he have said such statement? Would he have said such statement? Such statement should not be coming from people you have entrusted with state resources. You have entrusted with state power. You have entrusted with state authority. That's, that's, that's not upholding the oath of office he swore. They swore an oath of office to protect lives and property, to ensure that they give us deliverables of democracy and is coming with, I don't know what to say because I don't want to sound insulting. All right, Mr. Me here. Another and then story. I don't want to tread the same path with But such statement, if it's coming from a governor, Nigerians should pay attention. These are the kind of leaders you elect and you get the kind of leaders you elect because you don't pay attention to 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 to, to, to those we elect into 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 public office because such statements do come that they are ready to to lose how many country would rather say that we are ready to lose one citizen cause the life i'll give you a short illustration all right doctor Gideon. that was given it was a parable that talks about paying attention to whatever is put in your care Okay, Mr. Gide Johnson, uh, just before we round off um, this particular um, session, I just want you to address one thing. Uh, the rains uh, are here again, and the federal government is actually giving uh, more like um, an alert, a warning, and says uh, a 28 states are uh, at risk of uh, severe flooding. Uh, over time, we've had um, issues in some states, uh, you know, when the rains are at their peak and uh, uh, the, the rivers are being in Niger, and the uh, states around that particular uh, location are usually uh, flooded. What do you think we should be doing uh, differently instead of just giving, uh, you know, environmental alerts as we see almost every other time? Warning. They said, the government said, you are warning, the federal government is warning the state. So what do you expect me to say? We should, we should keep warning them. Whether warning will solve the problem. We should keep warning them. What steps have we taken to address this problem over the years? If you look at the money they they vote on environmental issues. Deforestation, flood control, and the rest of it. You look at the budget, if you follow the money, and then you know where government has paid its attention. So government is warning people without not taking practical steps. It's like someone that is hungry, you are praying for him to, 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 to be fed. Right. You don't provide the person food. So what do we get? Flooding will come, like the governor of Cardinal State said, and they are ready. Government, federal government has warned them. If you pay attention to what they have said, you leave those places so that you don't lose your life. You can lose your property, but the most important thing is you don't lose you don't lose your life. But like they said, government will warn you. They are prepared for you to lose your life and property if you don't heed to their warning. So that's what uh, I would say concerning concerning that because it's responsible of, of government not to make adequate provision. We, we have FEMA. We have FEMA. Federal Emergency uh, Authority, we have FEMA, we have different agencies of government. Have we mobilized them? Have we set up a coordination between states and the federal government and the local government to look at the affected areas? What will be our response to that particular issue when it happens? It's, it's nature. It's something that we know will happen. You know the time it will happen. And then you are issuing warning. You are not saying that this, we have taken step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We usually see United States of America and another climb when hurricane is about happening. First level, second level, third level, and they tell us different types of emergency that they put they put in place. They put an evacuation system to evacuate people to take them to certain location. They open convention centers and the rest of it. We are not doing that. We are warning. And you want me to advise government that is warning people? 
keep warning the people. Okay, lastly, Mr. Gillian Johnson. Mr. Jide Johnson, lastly, we see a story here on the Nigerian Tribune, which says, um, this is according to the Senate President, about this security budget matter. It says defense budget is not adequate. But when we look at the 2021 budget and just how much of a lion's share, you know, security allocation took up, and how, you know, there was a report by Serap just a few days ago talking about how much spent in security votes, you know, the, the budgets for security, all the loopholes, and just the corruption. So how then do we, do we marry these two information? You know, leakage and overspending for security with little to show for it, and the Senate now saying that defense, you know, budget is not enough. Yes. If money appropriated are not properly dispersed. And money dispersed are not monitored. And funds dispersed are not audited. And we have a situation whereby we don't allow public scrutiny over our security budget because we say it's national security. And national security fund is an operation of what we brought in from a security boat, rather, beyond security money allocated, the bulk of it goes to security food, which you don't allow public scrutiny to go into, into, into it. I have never seen any nation, and I want to be educated because I don't know everything, and I want to learn. I've never seen any nation that gives money to the chief executive of the state and the chief executive of the nation as a particular fund out of the security budget called security vote. That is the alpha and omega. It cannot be questioned on how he spends those security votes. I've never seen, and I stand to be corrected. It's an aberration that we brought from military government into civilian, into civilian government. And I've said it, we are not running a democratic government. Nigeria transited from a military government to a civilian administration because most of the institution are still militaristic in nature. They are still militaristic in nature. I went with this, one of the stories in this paper. We talked about FCT under siege. If federal capital territory is under siege and they are providing security for military formations, for central bank, for national assembly, what signal does it send to you? What signal? If our federal capital territory, the seat of power, the seat of government is under siege, and children are calling their parents that they want to come back home. Students are leaving schools. Is there all you need to do is to go to, to go on ground and see the stories? It tells you the security situation. So marry that with what the Senate president right. that has been in Abuja since 1999 is saying with the reality on ground. Then you know that we have been paying leave service to security issues. And there's the need for us to review it. If you are spending money on security vote, is our money, is our taxes. Explain to us, we use this to do this, to do this, to do that, to do that. But right, when you tell us that we cannot have public scrutiny on the money you are spending for budget on defense, let me tell you, we we'll still be in a, in the same circle. Mm -hmm. And Zig Ziglar said, for us to do the same thing, the same way, and in the same manner, and expect to get a different result, is the beginning of insanity. All right. Of All right. Well so, said, Mr. Jide Johnson. Many sure. thanks for your thoughts. Uh, he was very, very dispassionate concerning the issues of security, Indeed. you know, plaguing Nigeria at this particular time. Yes, thank you very much once again, Mr. Jide Johnson, for always gracing the breakfast on Fridays. We do hope you have a lovely weekend. Sure, sure about that. Surely do that. And you too, make sure you enjoy the best of your weekend, right. even though you come to work tomorrow, but yeah. you will have some time off. Thank you, Justin. It's thank a pleasure you. to be with you. And thank you to our listeners. There is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Everything will be better and will be better. Yes, there is. Yeah. We hope so. Thank you. We hope thank you so great. much. All right. We'll take a break here and we'll return with uh, Today in History. Do stay with us. <laughs>